Hi, I'm Kristen Amdahl and welcome back to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for making the Sadie Half Circle Crochet Shawl. This is a simple and fun top-down increasing shawl that creates a half circle shape. The sampling of easy to memorize stitch patterns makes this a relaxing zen project too. You will need 710 yards of number three DK weight yarn, an H8 or five millimeter crochet hook, yarn needle and scissors. The sample shown is in Biso Baby Yarn Color Lilac 5 Balls. Okay, for the sample I'm going to be using Biso Baby Yarn in Colorway Robin Egg Blue and an H8 or 5 millimeter crochet hook. The instructions stay, say to start with one foundation oval and that is a chain three and a double crochet in the third chain from your hook. When counting back, you don't want to count the loop on your hook. That's your working loop, so we'll count back one, two, three, double crochet as yarn over your hook, insert your hook in the specified chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's our foundation oval with the hole in the center. Row one begins with chain three, which counts as a double crochet, and then we'll work six additional double crochets in the oval. Yarn over, insert your hook in the oval, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, We'll keep doing that for six double crochets plus the chain three that counted as a double crochet will give us a total of seven double crochets at the end of row one. And this is what your work should look like at the end of row one. Row two begins with a chain three, turn your work, and work one double crochet in the first stitch. So it's that chain three that counts as a double crochet plus that double crochet for the first stitch. And then in the rest for the rest of the row, it's two double crochets in each stitch across. At the end of row two, you will have 14 double crochets. This is what your work should look like at the end of row two. You should have 14 double crochets. Row three begins with a chain three, which counts as a double crochet and one double crochet in that same first stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch. And our repeat for this row is two double crochets in the next stitch, and then one double crochet in the next stitch. And you wanna repeat that all the way across. This is what your work should look like at the end of row three. You should have 21 double crochets. Row four begins with slip stitching into the second stitch, then a chain three, which counts as a double crochet, and work a double crochet, chain one, two double crochets in that same stitch. Chain one, skip the next two stitches, and work two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet in the next stitch. And our repeat for this row is chain one, skip two stitches, and work two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet in the next stitch. You wanna repeat it across leaving the last stitch unworked. This is what your work should look like at the end of row four. Notice that you have seven shells, and at the end of the last shell, we left the last stitch unworked. Row five begins with slip stitching into the first chain one space. Chain three, which counts as a double crochet, then double crochet, chain one, two double crochets in that same chain one space. chain one, then two double crochets in the next chain one space, chain one, and two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet in the next chain one space inside the shell. And so our repeat for this row is chain one, 
two double crochets in the next chain one space, chain one, and then two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet in the next chain one space inside a shell. You wanna repeat that all the way across. This is what your work should look like at the end of row five. Notice that we still have our seven shells and now we have six sections in between the shells. And in each of those six sections, we now have one set of two double crochets. We're ready to begin row six. And for row six, we're going to slip stitch into the first chain one space. All the rows in this section will be identical. Uh, we'll start the same way with a chain three that counts as the first double crochet, then double crochet, chain one, two double crochet in that same chain one space. And now it's going to be chain one, two double crochets in the next chain one space. And then we'll do that a second time. Chain one, two double crochets in the next chain one space. And then chain one, and in the next chain one space inside a shell, it's two double crochets, chain one, and two double crochets. So you may notice now our sections with the two double crochets, those sections are going to grow on each of these rows. So our repeat for this row now is chain one, two double crochets in the next chain one space, two times, then chain one, two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet in the next chain one space inside a shell. And you wanna repeat that all the way across. For the rest of this section, rows seven through 11, we're going to be working in this same established pattern and increasing by one additional two double crochet section in each of the six sections between the seven shelves. So let me show you what that will look like. As you can see here, in between the shelves, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven sections of two double crochet sections in between each of the shells. So you work in the established pattern and then next we're going to work uh, two rows of double crochet. And so to do that first row of double crochet, the pattern says to work one double crochet in each stitch and chain across. What does that mean? So we'll start with a chain three that counts as our double crochet. Every time you see a stitch, you work a double crochet in it. Every time you see a chain one space, you work a double crochet in it. Okay, so in each stitch and each chain across, you work one double crochet. There's a chain one space, so that's a double, two doubles, and then the chain one, a double. And you wanna repeat that all the way across for row 12. This is what your work should look like at the end of row 12. You may notice that you have some ruffling at this point, but don't worry, the shawl will flatten out quite a bit at the end of the next lace section. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all about anything we talked about in this video, please leave them for me in the comments. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.